winning team. Here they are. We're lucky to have them with us. Thanks, guys. Come in, Sebi. What well I mate. Thank Great you. day. Sam Newton, and a lot of congratulations. And of course, Scott Babbage. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for joining us. And another great day, another great series. Look, just briefly, we'll talk about today, then we'll talk about the series. Today, um, you know, in, in many ways, it, it, could, it could have been a real struggle today. Could it, Seb? You've had a couple of beers last night. You were honest about that. Um, could have been a struggle. But in the end, pretty interesting race. Looked like you were enjoying yourselves, and the Asco boys gave you a bit of a hurry up at the end. Yeah, they were going to sell out of their skins today. I think Mark has had the best races I think I've seen him sell in a long time. Um, it was a tricky day and we haven't done that course for a while. I, don't think, I think we did it once two years ago or something and it's those courses, the results are like this. So it was good to get away and get away in the top pack. Not many people have uh, overtaken or beaten you all series, about all season, um, for lots of reasons, selling well, selling fast. But uh, today Asco just kind of find a way through at the end. Do you think you were a little relaxed having won the series already or do you just think they, they sell a blinder? No, no, we were definitely sailing. Like we were trying to win it. They just sailed really well. We, I think I called a jive halfway down the run where we probably should have kept extending and he kept extending and just got over our bow. Well, it made it great fun to watch, this for sure. Scott, tricky course, wasn't it? I can't ever remember seeing that course, actually, myself. We weren't even sure where the win with Mark was going to be. Yeah. yeah, it took us a long time to find it. We were expecting it to be inside Shark Island somewhere. Um, Gary said he was going to set a nice short course for us, but it didn't end up doing that. Long, wasn't it? Three long legs. Yeah, very long. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, it's been, just for talking about this whole week here, pace, boat speed, etc. You've kind of had the package, it seemed to us. Not the conditions I think any three of you would have chosen, if you could have dialed up your choice. Um, but you've kind of found all consistently enough speed and plenty of smarts around the race course. If you're going to debrief yourselves, give yourself a scorecard, how would you score your team's performance? Uh, well, there's plenty of areas for improvement. Even though we won five of seven, I think there's there's plenty of work to do in Lyres especially I think we're sort of we're not we're not dominant there so um, I think we can improve for sure you've enjoyed the week yeah it's been good yeah it's nice to win isn't it Sam um, great job by you well, we, we've been talking about you talked to us a little bit about I was asking you that ridiculous question but I kind of felt I had to do it how, how come you don't have any knots and twists which kind of is setting you up for a fall the next day isn't it but you, you sell again great boat hunting your boats the sails go up and down fast as you like again today good nice, another good boat hunting day for you guys yeah, I mean, it's a uh, you know, long time together and it sort of comes naturally. We, we never do it all perfectly, but I'm just trying to minimise the mistakes around the course and, you know, yeah, it's going to be sad well. And one of the things we see from your boat is it's quite a physical boat. I mean, you guys are walking up and down the rack all the time, you're moving the boat around, you're very physical at the front. Um, that trade-off between being physical to get the sails up and down but light and agile enough, where is that perfect balance? Is there a perfect spot to be? I think, you know, the boats, you know, the loads aren't high, so it's, you know, it's being agile and, as you said, you've just got to be light on your feet and in and out and the light breeze is tricky and you've just got to be working the big spectator chop back and forth and I think, you know, that's where the difference is between, you know, the top half of the fleet and the second half, you know. Talking to Ian uh, just now about the kind of correlation between these boats and America's Cup sailing, you've done an, a year and a bit in America's Cup team with Oracle, obviously a successful time for you. Uh, wh what did you pick out, what did you pull, take out of that experience? What did you learn? If there was kind of one or two things you pulled out of it, what were the best bits you learned? Um, I, I think this America's Cup, you know, the, the, how they analyse everything to the nth degree, you know, they can always do better. Like, you know, we had a near perfect scorecard after a discard, but, you know, there's, there's still a lot to improve, and, you know, we can make that a lot better if we get the opportunity to do it again next year. You know? And you enjoyed your time in America? Yeah, no, it's great, but it's much better to be here in Sydney Harbour. You're part of the Australian team, that's terrific. Well, uh, all three of you, it's been a great series. You've been the dominant boat, but it's one thing being dominant, it's another thing delivering and executing. You've done that. It's been a delight to watch you. Congratulations. Yet again, I said it last year, yet again, you prove yourself the world, the three world's best skiff sailors on the planet, 2014. Well done, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers, Sammy, Thank Scott you. and Sam. There's our top three for this year, the top three last year. They've done it again. The dream team is popped.